Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're talking about gear. It's gonna be a long, probably fairly detailed video about gear. Now this is a follow-up video, kind of. If you guys remember, I took a course a month or so back at Direct Action Resource Center, Darcy for short. The course was Tusk Tactical Urban Sustainment Course. And it was basically a course that taught you kind of how to survive, but more than survive, thrive. And I made a whole video kind of recapping that course, kind of an actual after action report, I guess. I'll link to it. I always get confused which side. One of these sides will have a little card. That'll link to my feedback of the course specific. I'm not gonna talk about the course much more than it was kind of a four day, three night course where you had to live out of your bag. There was a lot of simunition, so force on force type training. Uh, learned a lot of stuff but one of the big premises was it was grid down you had one bag that you could fill with gear and you lived out of that bag for four days three nights so i'm going to be breaking down my bag mostly as well as some of the other supplemental gear i used and all that kind of stuff so again huge thanks to rich over there at darcy and travis as well for having me uh, hosting the course it was it was an amazing experience thank you josh for hooking that up thank you to shooting surplus rand and bruce over there shooting surplus is uh, an awesome gun store they sell accessories as well shooting surplus I, i'm not allowed to link to him in youtube rand uh he fronted the cost of all of my simunition rounds and paid for some lodging while i was out there and stuff so it was it was an awesome experience that was put on by kind of those three people so big thanks to them i'll talk a little bit about some of the supplemental gear i guess out front because i don't have it with me so rand brought some guns that i could use it was not a live fire course but they did have a simunitions bolt that you could just toss in a real ar so he brought out an arsenal democracy ar for me to use we plopped a simunitions bolt in there i brought an mro trijicon mro on a scalar works mount which is just kind of my go-to setup so i brought that i ran that optic I brought a Surefire M600 on an Arisaka Defense mount. That was my white light for the course. Uh, I borrowed a mall and some night vision and binoculars and all that good stuff, which I'm not gonna talk to you because I don't even know what specific models I used, but I did use a lot of night vision that was provided for me uh, from Darcy. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take it home. And then I used a simunitions pistol that I just checked out of their cage there and I plopped on an X300 Ultra Surefire in which I used in a Safari Land, some Safari Land model that Rand also provided on this battle belt, which is mine. This is a Wilder Tactical belt. Uh, I have, this is a practice tourniquet on here and it comes with, you can get it in a kit, two rifle pouches, two pistol pouches, the belt and the inner belt. So this I brought because I knew I was gonna be running a bag and we were gonna be kind of tossing on gear for simunitions and whatnot. So I brought a battle belt. This from Wilder Tactical. Uh, I could make, I probably will make a, an old dedicated video on this. Wilder, they actually sent this out. This was the first, I think it was the first OD belt they made, period. Maybe I'm getting this wrong, but it might've been the first one. They got out to me right before the course, uh, right before I had to leave for the course. So huge thanks to them. They actually gave me a coupon code if you want anything from Wilder Tactical. Uh, I'll link to them down below if I can. I'm not sure if I can with YouTube's terms. Wilder Tactical, the code over there is LLOD. That'll save you 10% off of anything. So cool, thank you to them for that. I also did bring uh, my MSA Swordens Supreme Pro X. Uh, you don't need ear pro for simunitions, but I didn't want to get shot in the ear, so I did wear ear pro in addition to a gas mask that they loaned me. I'll show, I didn't bring it, but I do have my own gas mask. It's an SGE 400. It doesn't have the filter in it because the filters are sealed. I keep them separate, but this is my gas mask. I do have one that I've just had, you know, kind of a prepper type person. I have a couple gas masks actually. This is my nicest one. Uh, I'll link to this down below if I can. But anyways, gas mask in conjunction with a uh, helmet with night vision and ear pro, you know, keeps your whole face kind of safe from simunitions. So that's 
that. Uh, I wore pretty much one shirt the whole time. That's the shirt I'm wearing right now. This is a 5'11 tactical. I don't even know what shirt it is. I'm, you're gonna find a theme where I don't know the models of a lot of this stuff, but I'm gonna link to everything that I can down in the video description below. I also always put down at the very bottom all the coupon codes I have with the various companies and stuff like that. I have a lot of great relationships with a lot of great companies. They give me coupon codes that save you guys money. So if you're into that, Cool. So this was just, I wanted a long sleeve shirt because this was out in Little Rock, Arkansas and it was hot, but kind of cool at night and there were mosquitoes galore. So I wanted something that I could roll up and be kind of cool if I needed to, but also roll back down and keep me a little bit warm, keep me protected from the sun and the bugs and all that stuff. So I wore this for three days, three nights straight. Uh, and I, I'm, not, I'm not a very stinky guy, so that was, that was totally fine. Uh, on the fourth day, I did switch out to a fresh shirt. So I brought two shirts. This is another 5'11 shirt. I think it's the Strike. This is a much more tactical shirt with a lot more features, uh, but I wore this on the last day. Those were the two shirts that I wore. No undershirts, nothing else, that was it. Oh, I did wear a jacket. I don't have it with me because it did rain pretty much the whole time. But a lot of this stuff, the, the majority of the stuff was in a classroom where we learned about stuff and then it was in the shoot house. So both protected by the rain, from the rain. So I wore a Vertex jacket, a uh, rain jacket that I like a lot. Uh, maybe, I don't know if I've done a review on it, but it's like can break can break open for concealed carry and all that stuff. So Vertex jacket uh, was great, a rain jacket. This is a Vertex pack that I used that I sprayed with a couple layers of Nick wax to kind of keep it waterproof as well. So yeah, rain, Vertex rain jacket that I put in here, this other shirt that I put in here and this shirt that I wore pretty much the whole time. I wore a hat, I believe it was, the multicam black version of this is a trucker. I sell these, they're LLOD multicam trucker hats. Uh, I got it because they have the mesh back, so it kind of keeps your head warm uh, as well. And yeah, it's a hat, so it protects you from the sun and casings and all that stuff. And then what, I wore a watch. This is his little G-Shock OD watch. I'll link to it. It's just, you know, it's just a durable, pretty, it's like a hundred dollar watch, nothing too fancy. For pants, I wore UF Pro All Terrains. I really like these pants. We'll get a little closer into them here. And so here are the UF Pro pants. I have a handful of kind of combat type pants, some cry precision, some vertex recons, a few other things. I really like the features of these UF Pro pants and I'm gonna kind of get into why. So as I kind of laid out before, I was wearing a backpack, I was wearing a battle belt. When you wear hip straps or battle belts or anything like that, access to these top pockets becomes a little bit more difficult. So these lower pockets actually become in handy for storing gear, stashing stuff, Leatherman Skeletool, Olight S1, I didn't even mention. My flashlight I used was the Olight S1R2. This is the one they just sent this out to me like a uh, day before I flew out to the class. Uh, it wasn't even out yet, I don't think. I used that, a little thousand lumen light. It's my EDC light, I used it there, it's, it's awesome. I uh, can put it into my hat. I actually primarily use this as my headlamp. Put it into your hat like that, boom, headlamp. Anyway. These pockets, you can put gear down low so it's out of the way of your battle belt and everything like that. Leatherman Skeletal as well. So each side has these big old cargo pockets. They're zippered so they're super secure storage so stuff won't fall out. You can access this here or from the side zipper here. There are in, this internal organization here for mag pouches so I did put some air mags in here when I needed to store a little extra. Also this little pouch here, just kind of quick access, does have a little Velcro thing here to put little Velcro stuff on as well. Same deal on the other side with this cargo pocket. So really nice, really, I, I really like how the cargo pockets are laid out. I like these little pockets. These pockets up high are good too, just for storing whatever. Uh, they are kind of high slit, so they're kind of, you know, you access them from the top like this. There is also kind of a hidden secured zipper pocket along this line that I don't use for anything, but you could use to store kind of important things up there. Back pockets also don't use much, but they are zipper closure. These ones do have little stretch panels everywhere. So stretchy little gusset in the waist, stretchy butt area, so you're not gonna blow anything out. 
when you're doing this or that. I love these also in the winter. The inside, they have a little zipper that you can zip in a little fleece liner so they can stay super, super warm when you're out hiking in the cold. So I do use these pants all year round. I chose them also, ironically, I use them in the winter, but I chose them because they're relatively lightweight in the summer. So I knew this course was gonna be super, you know, hot and humid, which it was. So I wanted pants that breathe fairly well. My cry precisions are a little hotter, a little more muggy. I knew they'd get little, you know, I'd get sweatier everywhere by wearing those. So these stayed relatively cool. They also do have right here, they have zippers in the knees. They have reinforced knees, a little thicker material in the knees as well. So down here you can see, I don't know, you can probably see my Maybe you can see my skin through there. I think you can because it's mesh. So this opens up and I kept these pretty much open the whole time to add a little bit of extra ventilation. That's not really what they're for, but they do work well by adding a little ventilation. What they're really for is to put your knee pads. So you can get these very thin, lightweight, minimal knee pads. It's basically kind of like a denser memory foam type material. So for fast impacts, boom, it'll protect your knee, you know, it's not a full on plastic knee pad, so you're not gonna do any skateboard tricks or anything with these, but it will protect you when you're kneeling on the ground a lot, or if you take a little, you go down on your knee a little bit too fast, whatever. So I had these in the whole course, and the thing is you can still look inconspicuous because with the knee pads in, it just, you know, it's not an external knee pad. It looks very, just blends in very well. So anyways, these are the, UF pros, I'll link to them down below, like I'm linking to everything I think. Oh, also I wore just a blue Alpha Gear belt. I am also selling these now on my website. These are cool because they're a Cobra buckle, which I love, it's just the quickest on and off when you need to get access to whatever, got some explosive diarrhea or something, you need to get that off. Nothing quicker than a Cobra belt, as well as to put back on, always right to the same size. Very rigid for a concealed carrier, putting stuff on your belt that you might need to do. Just cool, cool factor. And the main thing that differentiates this from so a lot of the others is that this female end is the smaller version. So it'll fit through your normal belt loops, no problem. Anyway, I'm selling these on my site now, like an LLOD edition. So they're made by Blue Alpha Gear, but I'm selling them and you get a little special LLOD logo in there and everything. Anyways, if you're interested in a belt, LLOD.us, my website has a lot of stuff. Those are the pants I wore and they worked out great for four days in the hot, hot, humid, sweaty, Little Rock weather. And then for footwear, I wore the Solomon Quest 4Ds. These are the Forces Edition. They're waterproof, supportive, just, I use these boots for everything, hike a lot. Uh, so I just wanted something supportive and heavy duty and that I knew would be comfortable and hold up. So Solomon's, I think I did a whole review on these. I probably will forget to link to it, but you could search my channel. Solomon Forces, these are great. I'll link to them. And for socks, I don't even know what brand these are. <laughs> Ying D, there's probably better socks out there. But I just wanted a like six pack or something of the same socks so I could toss a bunch of socks in there. Socks were the only thing that I changed out every day, maybe twice a day some days. So I packed a lot of socks. And that I think is it for, for clothing and kind of supplementary things. Yeah. I think that's it. So now we're gonna get into the bulk of the gear, which is the pack. Okay, so this is the Gamut Plus. I have a lot of bags, I've used a lot of bags. You've seen me go through a lot of different get home bags, Condors and Sog packs and Vanquist packs. And so this is a Vertex bag. Vertex is cool. They, I have a Vertex bag is my EDC bag, the regular Gamut over here. I did a whole video on my EDC bag go through the bag in great detail, what I have in my EDC kind of kit. So this is the Gamut Regular, my favorite EDC pack, bag, backpack, laptop type bag that I've ever had to date, like by a long shot really. So when it came to getting a bug out bag or a get home bag for this course specifically, one thing I wanted was something that wasn't super bulky with a lot of molly and stuff that would be hanging off and whatever. And also one that would have a dedicated hip strap. I did not want a dedicated hip strap for this because my hip 
was filled with a battle belt. So that kind of knocked out a lot of my bigger bag options that would be able to hold all the gear that I needed for, for four days. So I wanted a bag that had those things and I already loved the Gamut Regular. Gamut Plus is exactly the same as the Gamut Regular, just a little bigger. So I was familiar with the pack. I kind of had a system that I laid out. I kind of was familiar with the features. It was a solid pack that I knew would hold up to everything. So I, I went with the Gamut Plus. I really like this color scheme. Uh, I do have a coupon code as well at vertex.com uh, for anything off for it. 25% off of anything, a huge coupon code, LLOD. Those four letters will save you 25% off of anything at Vertex. So that is cool. So let's get into the pack. Um, it's not really going to be a pack review. It's going to be more of what's in the pack, uh, but we'll just kind of get into it. On the front here, so this is the pack. I don't know if you can see it very well. This is it on the pack. It has this front pocket here that kind of zips open like this. This does have some straps that you could hook in and if you needed to like shove a helmet or jackets or something in here, this kind of can be like a hammock type pouch, but I just use it zipped up and it zips down all the way. It also, there's a little secret compartment under here that you can put kind of secret gear or you can stuff this into it and then if you wanted to you did have you do have an external uh, kind of Alice Molly compatible lashing here but I don't run it like that I run it closed discreet like this but I do kind of utilize this stuff for various pieces of gear so in here I have repel this is 100% DEET I needed this bad because there's so many mosquitoes. So I brought that. It's not really an issue out here in Colorado. Here's some paracords, some trash bags. A lot of this gear I didn't really dig into, which is the nature of when things go fine, you don't dig into the extra gear that you need kind of in emergencies. So a lot of this gear went untouched for the course and would probably go untouched for a normal get home type scenario as well. So a lot of people were like, oh, you don't need half that stuff. You're right, I don't need half that stuff, but there are scenarios that I might need some of it. Uh, so anyways, yeah, some sunscreen up here. I have zip ties along the edge here, a whistle here. This I have some shock cord, so it's kind of like paracord, but not like paracord at all because it's stretchy, doesn't hold as much, but it's good for lashing extra stuff to your pack if you need to. Didn't use that at all. This is just a GI cleaning kit because some munitions do get pretty dirty. Up here are some little mini carabiners that I did use to hook up a mosquito net, um, as well as these little clip guys. Um, again, I'm not getting too detailed. I have a knife here. I have a pair of Leatherman Raptor shears, and that's pretty much out it for this outside component. Uh, that's, you know, a lot of this gear I didn't really use much, so I'm just kind of breezing, breezing through that. Then on the outside of the pouch here, I have a pocket. I like this bag. I really, really like this bag for this kind of stuff uh, and EDC stuff because there's two pockets for water bottles that can fit up to a big Nalgene as well. This is what I have. This is the 48 ounce big boy over here. In here I could put another water bottle if I needed to. I just have some mechanics gloves shoved in the side here. But I like that when you don't have a water bottle in, it's just, it's flat, it's streamlined, it's nice. You can shove other stuff in there, whatever. But if you want to use it for a water bottle, you can. It does have this stretchy elastic as well that I did flip over the top so that keeps your bottle from bouncing out when you're running or in motion or anything like that. So those are water bottles. There's another little pocket over here that I don't have anything in. And then there's a pocket over here that I have these, I have some of these. These are like little expanding towels. I didn't actually use these at all. I didn't even bring these. I just, I have like a 50 pack of these that I, I toss in. So I found one of these on the ground actually when I was going through here and just tossed it in here. But what I did use a lot were these combat active wipes. So these are basically like wet ones, but they're biodegradable uh, and they smell pretty good. So this basically I gave myself, what do you call them, horse showers basically, where I just kind of wipe my pits and, and some of my private areas with this every night to keep myself somewhat clean. Also, you can obviously use this to wipe 
normally just basically a sanitary wipe that it's biodegradable. So if you need to go bury it in the woods or something while you're out hiking in your normal everyday life, you can do that without fear. That's actually all I have in this outside pocket. Now before we get into the big pocket, let's talk about this back panel here. So all Vertex bags have this back panel. I'll just go like this. They have this back panel, they have the zipper, it's like a concealed carry pocket, whatever. It's just this extra panel back here that you can put basically flat stuff. I guess I'll go ahead and open it while I'm talking about it. I didn't use it for concealed carry or anything like that, though I am selling a Velcro holster. I should probably go grab one, but I don't think I'm gonna. I'm now selling a very slim Velcro holster designed to use in these packs. It just goes in here that you can put your gun in. Uh, I'll make a separate video on that, but I am selling Velcro holsters. LLOD.US is where I sell all my own gear, if you're wondering. Anyways, back here, Velcro lined portions where you can put your concealed carry stuff or anything that's Velcro. What I did was put my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag liner back here. So rather than having to crunch them up and get them into the pouches that you'll see in a bit, I just folded them flat and put them back here. It made it much easier every night, just fold, 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 slap it in here. I don't have to worry about, you know, getting it perfectly, all the air out or whatever. So I use this back panel to basically store my sleeping kit, which all it was, we'll get into it here in a second, was a super minimal inflatable mattress and a sleeping bag liner because it did not get cold in Arkansas. I got a little cold one night, but I just kind of wore my clothes <laughs> and socks while I was sleeping, so it wasn't too bad. In here as well, in this zipper pocket, this is a body armor panel from Premier Body Armor. So Premier makes these panels that are the full size of the Vertex bags. They're made specifically for each Vertex bag. They have one now for the Gamut Plus. So you have a huge bulletproof panel. Granted, it's only pistol rounds, but it doesn't weigh much. It takes up pretty much no space at all, and it gives you a huge, huge bulletproof panel, which in a grid down scenario, a little bit of extra bullet resistance. I never say no to that. Premier also gave me a coupon code. LLOD saves 10% off of premierbodyarmor.com. So that's what I had in the back portion. And now let's get into the main portion here. So this bag is kind of, oh, actually there's a little pocket in here. There's a little pocket up here that I kept a, a headlamp, my, some basic hygiene stuff up here. Toothbrush, toothpaste, flossers, some miscellaneous batteries, that kind of stuff. Oh, a little survival mirror. Nothing nothing too fun, just, just various, various uh, hygiene items. Now the main part of the pack can open up to where it just opens like this. Sorry, I should have zoomed this camera out a little bit. It does open up where you can just do it like this, access whatever you need to, which I did that a lot. But for the sake of showing what's in here, we're gonna open it up all the way. So it opens up all the way. This Rich taught us that I, it was one of the things that I hadn't really thought about. A pack like this, even though this is very high quality, heavy duty YKK zippers that probably won't fail you, it also does have these buttons here that can help it stay closed as well. But if all of those things fail and this thing blows out and your kit flies all over the place, he said a good thing to put in your pack is clothespins. So he said this was kind of a secret that they know in the military to bring these in case their pa packs explode. So I did add some, I'll get to them in a second, some heavy duty clothespins to my kit. So that was one thing I added to my kit. Uh, up here, nothing much, Sharpie, I some bags. I do like, so I ate a lot of Mountain House. I do like these. So these are spoons, but they're extra long handles. So this is a titanium extra long handle spoon that I used to eat my mountain houses. Love it. Uh, I've been using the long handled spoons for backpacking and camping and stuff for a long time because these, when these mountain house bags are tall and you're digging in here with your dirty hands, you're getting like food, food chunks on your fingers from having to dig in and stuff. And you could cut the bag shorter or whatever, but might as well get an extra long spoon. Makes eating much, much better. Okay, so up here we'll just kind of go through these pockets. I'll kind of go through what I have in them. This is a camp 
towel. So it just is a microfiber, super fast drying towel that you can use after you wash your hands, assuming they're clean, I would use this. Uh, just a towel is obviously just a good thing to have for all kinds of uses. I had two things right in the rain notebook because I did take notes while we were uh, kind of learning stuff. So various notes I jotted down in here. Some of you guys actually, I always kept post-it notes in my get home bags and stuff because they're good to leave notes either behind, mark a trail, leave a note for somebody where you're gonna meet them in a certain location or whatever. So post-it notes, awesome, high vis, orange, great. A lot, a lot of uses. I was just using regular post-it notes. These are now the post-it note extremes so these are like waterproof and heavier duty uh, the stickiness is supposed to be stickier so per the recommendation of some of you guys that watched one of my other get home bag videos you recommended I upgrade to the extremes which I didn't even know existed but they exist now I have them so thanks for that I had some little foamy earplugs that I didn't use but I just always kind of put in here because they weigh nothing and take up no space in here is kind of a boo-boo kit pills. So here you have uh, anti-diarrhea type pills, you have ibuprofens, you have Benadryl, you have all your kind of normal pills as well as just some basic uh, band-aids and just, just general boo-boo stuff. So I just have that here separate from kind of my trauma kit. So this is for small stuff or, or whatever. So I keep that in here, kind of easy access up top. In this next pocket here, I have fire starting kit, which I didn't use. Oh, actually I used the lighters out of this. So I have some waterproof matches, a couple mini Bix, some wet fire, tinder, and that's basically it. This is just if you want to start a fire, I have it in a little Ziploc type bag so it doesn't get wet, even though all the stuff in there actually is okay to get wet. I also have a compass right here, just a lightweight one. Uh, it's in my backpack. It could get broken or damaged or whatever, but it's it's a decently decent, like you know, mid-level compass. Not a, not a piece of junk, but nothing nothing super expensive. I didn't use the compass for the course at all, but I have it there for for navigation reasons in case I do need it. Again, it's another item that's pretty small, doesn't take up much weight. Now we'll get into the main portion of the bag. I ate primarily mountain house meals. Uh, for every dinner I had a mountain house. This is actually like a mini one. This isn't a full size meal. So I had a, a dinner. So I needed to boil water for the dinner, which I'll get to in a second mountain house you don't always know if you have time to boil water or not so you might not want to rely on mountain houses but i i brought them and i ate them every night i love mountain houses actually i enjoy them <laughs> I, I eat them when i go camping i usually don't eat them at home but i have been known to eat one or two at home just because i wanted to so anyways mountain house din dinners you do have to boil water technically you don't but to get the actual good flavor and stuff you you do want to boil your water for that so you need to need to add some boiling water i ate this for breakfast every morning it's a mountain house this one is granola with milk and blueberries delicious i got this one because you do not need to boil water for this one it is great with just cold water you dump it in there eat it Awesome, really great breakfast. Has the milk in there, pretty good nutrition, pretty good energy for the day. So this is what I had for breakfast every single morning. For lunch, I had, so we'll get into it here. So this is a mug inside of here. This is a little dry bag that I just kind of put all my food snack type items into. In it, this is a little, what is the brand? I forget, it's a GSI Outdoors stainless steel mug. I've had this for a while. I used this to boil the water in conjunction with an Espit stove. I have it in here. This is a smell proof bag. If you know Espits, you know they stink. This is a smell proof bag that kind of helps. It doesn't block all the stink. But anyways, a little mini Espit stove. These are just the most compact, most effective, reliable way to boil water or, or cook on really. Uh, they're, they're great. So I have an Espit stove. That's what I used every night to boil my water. And I boiled it in this little cup. In this cup, I have some snacks, but I, this cup actually, when I started, was just filled with 
Propel and Gatorade. The whole course we had to filter our own water. We didn't get any water from anywhere. So I'll get into my water filter in a second. But we filtered like kind of swamp water the first day. Luckily then we just collected rainwater off of the roof and that water was much better tasting. But Propel and Gatorade, in addition to replenishing electrolytes and stuff, does mask the bad flavor of water. So I had a full, the whole cup was filled with Gatorades and Propels. Now it's not, obviously. What I ate for lunch most days were these. You've seen them in my other videos, probably. They're Millennium Energy Bars. These have a, just have like a five year shelf life. There's 400 calories, they're dense. Uh, dense nutrition, I guess, dense calories. They're, they can, they don't melt, so you can have them in extreme heat or extreme cold. And I love how they taste. They're kind of like a very hard, like angel food cake type thing. I love these bars. I always take them hiking. I have them in all my kits. Uh, so I ate these for lunch pretty much. And then I brought a handful of just these like little nuts, peanuts and honey roasted peanuts and stuff like that. And that was pretty much my lunches every day. I did have some beef jerky that I kind of snacked on uh, throughout as well. So that's a mug that I just put here in a dry bag. The dry bag you can obviously use to collect water or you can use it to keep stuff dry. I use it kind of just to contain all of these miscellaneous food items. It is a roll top, so it's, you know, it's typical you roll it down and then you close it like that and then it becomes a little waterproof mini dry bag. It fits nicely around that cup. So that's in there. This is actually um, not the pouch. I actually just found, I lost the pouch and then I just recently found it. This is a sleeping bag liner. What a sleeping bag liner does is just go inside a sleeping bag. They're not really designed to be used on their own, but you can. It's basically a very warm weather sleeping bag. And I got this primarily to keep the bugs off of me, though it wasn't enough to keep the mos mosquitoes bit me through this little sleeping bag liner. Um, you can also use them to, if you have like a 32 degree bag, you can put a liner in and that'll drop it to like a 20 degree bag or something like that. So sleeping bag liners are, are nice to have. Uh, sometimes they'll make the sleeping bag a little more comfortable. I'll probably transfer this into the pouch that it actually came in because it's much smaller. Anyway, sleeping bag liner was part one of my sleep system. This, like I said earlier, I folded up and put into the back, just kind of flat in the pack. And then I have this, I'm not gonna take it out. It's a static V climate. So this is a little ultra light, relatively comfortable for how small it is, how small it packs up and how light it is, but it's a sleeping pad. So this was a sleeping pad. I aired it up, blew it up with my mouth. It's not one of those auto inflating ones. Those auto inflating ones are cool, but they are bigger, heavier, take up more space. I just wanted the absolute minimum because I was surviving out of this bag for four days. I needed to pack all my food and all my clothes and my water purification stuff, everything. And then like I mentioned before, I have a little mini Espit stove in here just the standard folding Espit stove. I have another pocket right here I'll get into. Uh, I have some stuff I didn't use. This is some moleskin for blisters on your feet and whatnot. This is a little disposable poncho that I also didn't use. The other thing I had in here that I don't have in here for Colorado because I don't need it is this. This is a big mosquito net. So I basically draped this mosquito net over my whole sleep system to keep the mosquitoes off of me, which were wicked at night. I hate off. I hate bug spray, not really just necessarily for the cancer causing elements or whatever there may be. I just don't like the feel of it. So rather than douse myself with off before I went to bed, I covered myself with this mosquito net. Uh, this is a mosquito face mask that just goes over your head. I didn't actually use that. But this I also had to fit in here. So it does kind of pack down relatively tight. I don't have that in here in Colorado because I don't need it. So I just brought that out to show you that I used it out in Arkansas. The other thing I have in here is a little mini tool bag. I'm not going to get in too into it, but I'll tell you what's in it. Uh, it has a Leatherman bit kit, a little four inch adjust adjustable wrench, a mini hacksaw, duct tape, some super glue, some little Velcro straps. It has a little 3D printed uh, water key as well. That's important for urban settings. And I do have my heavy duty clothes pins in here in case I have a bag blowout or need it for something else attaching other pieces of kit. 
So that is the rest of the main portions of the bag. In here, I did have my water purification system. This is a Sawyer. This is a one gallon bag, I believe, and it's a gravity filter. So I'll just kind of take it apart here. The gravity filter is nice. It has a string. Basically, you fill this bag up with water and you let this dangle. This part at the end here is the filter. So you hang this up anywhere and this drips in to your water bottle pretty quick and very, very easy. You're not sitting around pumping water or squeezing water or having to suck water through a life straw or whatever. You just fill this bag up with dirty water, hang it somewhere, and it drips down into your clean water. Uh, Rich was saying they use gravity filters. Sometimes they hang it from their bags and move. So you can hang it from the top of your bag, it drips down into something lashed onto the bottom of your bag, and you're good to go as you're in motion. I use this stationary, so hung it from a tree or a whatever piece on a building and filtered water that way. Uh, also, sorry, I didn't mention it. In here, in my little mug, I did have aqua tabs, so chlorine type water purification, which I did use as well. Last thing you want in a survival scenario is to be diarrheaing or puking your guts out. Uh, so I actually went for the double method where I filtered it with the Sawyer filter, and then I also added a chlorine tab. It's another reason why the Gatorade and the, what is it, Purell? Purell? Not Purell, that's the hand sanitizer. <laughs> Whatever the vitamin water type stuff is, that's where that comes in handy to mask the flavor of chlorine as well. Uh, so I did do double water filtration just to be safe. Then in here, I'm not gonna take it out, I have a Camelback water bladder this is a three liter in here so 100 ouncer and then velcroed onto here i have a tourniquet and then i have a little trauma kit that i made into one of these maxpedition pouches on the back in here we have let's just go into it real quick we have the nasal way nasal uh, tube thing, I forget what it's called. I'm having a brain fart on it. Chest seals, uh, quick clot, and some triangular bandages, and some gloves. So this is kind of the bigger trauma, like massive bleeding type or hemorrhaging kit. And that just Velcros on to the top up here. Very, very nice. And I think that's honestly it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed. I did completely take this bag apart when I got home, restocked it, kind of changed some pieces of gear out. Uh, but this is roughly what I was running in the course and is roughly what I'm gonna keep in my bag moving forward as well. And then I guess we'll talk about a couple other features of the bag. It does have this sternum strap across here. So this was a bag that was out of stock. Vertex actually sent me one of their demo units uh, that didn't have the sternum strap. So I took the sternum strap off of my other gamut, put it on here. That's why it's black and doesn't match. The real one that comes on it does match. And then it has like a waist strap. So what I talked about before, it doesn't have a hip strap, a big thick strap, but it does have a waist strap. And mainly I like waist strap. I like hip straps are better for carrying a load, but waist straps at least do plus the sternum straps, keep the bag from like bouncing a bunch off of your body and stuff like that. So a waist strap did come in handy. Also the pack, even when loaded out, is still relatively thin. So the thinness of a bag is something that Vertex bags do pretty well. Hold a lot of gear and still remain pretty thin, which I, I've always liked that in bags for as long as you'll see my bag videos on my channel probably. I've really liked thin bags, especially for EDC stuff. Makes even more sense somewhat. So if I was like commuted to work, if I took the subway or whatever, I would probably run into this as well. A big bulky bag that sticks out, you kind of can't fit through people and you're running into things as you're kind of moving around, it's no good. It's also no good when you're clearing rooms and trying to be tactical or whatever. What I found was even with this bag, which was pretty thin, when I'm going down hallways and clearing and trying to let people buy me and kind of like, you know, bumping into doorways and stuff, 
The smaller and thinner your bag is, the better. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I had thought about it, but hadn't really put it into practice in real world use. All the guys with big bags, which there were some of them at the course, big chunky bags were just bouncing, bouncing into things, knocking into me. I couldn't get through the doorway when they were blocking it and stuff like that. So thin backpack is, is beneficial for, for a lot of reasons. The Vertex has that dialed in pretty well. Whew. That was a lot of talking. I did that straight through. So I've been talking for a while. My throat's getting kind of dry. So we're going to wrap this thing up. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you like this kind of video, awesome. Thanks for watching it. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if you found it helpful or informative or entertaining or any of that stuff. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not. I do guns, gear, truck stuff, overlanding, survival, all that kind of stuff here. So I say all that kind of stuff a lot, I'm noticing. I need to really cut that. I really need to focus on trying to be a better public speaker. I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments, but anyway. Thanks for watching. Again, Direct Action Resource Center, if you have a chance to train with those guys in any capacity, jump on it. Rich and Travis, just incredible instructors, incredible human beings, really. I have a, a lot of respect for them just as people, but also as instructors. So just really, I can't say enough good things about my time spent there at Direct Action Resource Center. Again, thanks to Shooting Surplus, Rand and Bruce over there. Josh, also thanks to you and everyone that I trained with there. Great getting to know you, training with you. Thanks. Uh, a lot of them had a lot more experience with some munitions with me than, than I did and shoot house stuff. So I learned some from the students as well. It was just an overall great experience. It helped me refine my kit a little bit um, and also kind of validated some stuff that I had in my kit, some choices that I already made without really using it in a scenario like this. So it was a, it was a great experience overall. Anyways, guys, as always, hope you're awesome. And until next time, take care.